We're going to go ahead and get started. It's 1130. Uh, call this meeting to order, annual meeting of the MAG Regional Council. Uh, for members participating in the Zoom, please remember to unmute your device before speaking and mute when you're not speaking to create a positive experience for all attendees. In other words, make sure you turn that thing off so we're not getting that reverberation back and forth. Uh, if you're using your telephone, please press star six to mute, uh, to unmute, press star nine, and then uh, uh, that's to raise your hand. For members in a room today, please be aware that your microphone may pick up uh, sidebar conversations, uh, conversations that may not be heard in the room, but certainly could be heard uh, during the broadcast. We have a call to audience, item number two, we have any cards, okay? Listen, before you do that, uh, I'm going to take this a little bit. Uh, something that we used to do that we're not doing, but I'd like to do is, uh, let's go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item is the call to audience. Members of the public were asked to submit written comments related to this meeting through the MAG website. Comments may be sent at any time leading up to the meeting, but must be received at least one hour prior to the posted start time for that meeting. Uh, this opportunity for the public to comment on items that, are, uh, that fall under the MAG's jurisdiction that are not uh, on the agenda or that are on the agenda for discussion and not for action. Uh, Make staff uh, have, uh, I already asked you that, have we received any comments? You said yes, so if you'd read them right now, that'd be awesome. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Regional Council. We did receive one comment from Bill Ferris, Jr. of Chandler, Arizona. Begin comment, Mayor Wires and members of the Regional Council Committee, as a professional engineer, member Ariz American Council of Engineering Companies of Arizona Board of Directors, and resident of Maricopa County, I thank you for the opportunity to address the committee in written form. The American Council of Engineering Companies of Arizona, AC ACEC Arizona, <coughs> represents 200 member firms and 5,000 engineers and associated professors, professionals sorry, who, who focus on protecting public health, safety, and welfare through infrastructure development. We are passionate about planning, designing, constructing, and rehabilitating infrastructure throughout the MAG region where we live, work, and play. ACEC Arizona fully supports the development of a regional transportation plan that provides the flexibility to meet the future transportation needs of the MAG region. We applaud the efforts of the committee members to develop and secure a long-term funding mechanism for continued investment in our transportation system. Voter-supported investments in infrastructure produce advancements in transportation technology, economic development, regional competitiveness, and overall quality of life. We wholeheartedly encourage you to continue <coughs> to plan the next phase of transportation infrastructure development in the MAG region. ACEC Arizona, as an engaged and eager partner, stands ready to assist in any and all local, regional, and legislative efforts. We thank the committee for your tireless efforts, and we commit to promoting the delivery of your vision for a successful regional transportation plan. Respectfully, William R. Ferris, Jr., Vice President, Stantec Consulting Chair-Elect, ACEC Arizona Board of Directors. End comment. Mr. Chair, that completes our public comment. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, item number three uh, is uh, Executive Director's Report. Eric? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Turn on my microphone here. <clears throat> Get the slides up. Uh, thank you. I, I'd like to start by uh, recognizing our uh, IT staff. Uh, you know, over the last year, I, I you know, we we had to maintain productivity uh, through uh, remote uh, working, and our IT staff has just done a great job, and and they've patched together some technology here to so we can support these in live meetings. This room is actually going to uh, undergo a major upgrade tomorrow, starting tomorrow. So. Really appreciate our IT staff and keeping us all connected. I know it's not hasn't been easy. I think they uh, solved a problem of one minute before TPC uh, yesterday. So thank uh, thank our IT staff for that. Uh, next slide. So June sixth, uh, every year there's a National Secure Your Load Day. It's very important because uh, uh, in 2020 DPS reported a, a thousand uh, accidents and seven deaths due to uh, 
debris on the roadway. So once again, a very important uh, event. Next slide. Our annual report has been posted. Uh, we do this every year, trying to summarize the accomplishments of uh, you all as our member agencies, as well as uh, the agency as a whole. So there, it's available on our website. Uh, take a look at it. I think you'll be impressed. Thank you. Uh, next slide. And lastly, uh, September 2nd, uh, in conjunction with the uh, League of Arizona Cities and Towns Conference, the Arizona Mega Region Council meeting will be, uh, will be held uh, 2.30 on September 2nd. So uh, hopefully you can attend. Uh, we did that virtually, uh, uh, actually earlier this year, I think. Um, so this will be a, a, a in-person event. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, number four is approval of consent agenda. Uh, items 4A through 4S are on the consent agenda. Does any member of the Regional Council have questions or, or request a uh, presentation on any of the items? Um, I mean, Mayor, uh, a request to remove item 4N. To, okay. Request to uh, uh, remove item 4, you're going to address that after we're done. Yep, I have a quick motion. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have a request. I don't think that we need a motion on that. Uh, so could I get a motion for the remaining uh, to approve on the consent agenda? I'll make the motion, Mr. Chair. Second. Second, Mayor Adam Seal. Okay, I have a motion from Mayor Weiss and a second from Mayor Hermosillo. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. vote. Okay, hold on. We're, we're going to take people in person first. Uh, uh, and again, in person, all in favor, vote aye. Aye. Any opposed, in person, vote nay. Okay, now we'll do a roll call with the people uh, that are on the Zoom meeting. Uh, starting with uh, uh, David Ortega, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Rolf aye. Rivera. Clint Hickman. Aye. Chip Wilson. Aye. Jenny Dickey. Aye. David Smith. Aye. Patrick Duffy. Aye. Christian Price. Aye. Thomas Schof. Aye. Corey Woods. Aye. Corey Woods. Aye. Very good. Uh, Valerie Molina. Aye. Uh, Alexis Hermosillo. Aye. Kathy Carlott. Aye. Scott Moore. Aye. And Gail Barney. Aye. We have a unanimous decision. Thank you. That passes. Mayor Prairie is an aye as well. Sorry. Who did I miss? May you called Mayor Prairie, but I didn't unmute in time, so I say aye as well. Okay, very good. Okay, so we're moving on to uh, uh, Motion to approve 4N, which is support for raise grant applications with the amendment that we withdraw the City of Phoenix request. Okay, any discussion on that motion? Can I get a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion from uh, Phoenix Mayor, second from Avondale's Mayor. Uh, motion to approve, uh, second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed, vote nay. Again, roll call vote. Uh, David Ortega. Aye. Raul Pereira. Aye. Clint Hickman. Aye. Chip Wilson. Aye. Jenny Dickey. Aye. David Smith. Aye. Patrick Duffy. Aye. Christian Price. Aye. Thomas Schof. Aye. Corey Woods. Aye. Valerie Molina. Aye. Alexis Hermosillo. Aye. Kathy Carla. Aye. Scott Moore. Aye. And Gail Barney. Aye. Did I miss anybody? This okay. Is excuse me. Uh, yeah, this is Mayor Juan Rodriguez from the city of Tulsa, and I vote aye. Thank you. Okay, and uh, I hope everyone will excuse me for calling you by your first name, but I can't make out the city you're from. It's too small. It's too far away. So <laughs> I have good eyesight, but not that good. 
Uh, anyway, moving on to item number five. Uh, there's an update development of the new regional transportation plan, Meg Transportation staff. Audra Kester Thomas will provide this report. Audra? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members of Regional Council, it's a pleasure to be with you today to deliver an important milestone in the development of the next regional transportation plan to inform the extension of Proposition 400. I come by way of good news from Transportation Policy Committee yesterday who unanimously supported uh, the draft investment plan that was included in your agenda packet for consideration also today. I will step back, provide some context on where we've been, where we're heading, and then open this as an opportunity for regional council to take action. Next slide. We'll first provide an update on public engagement included in your agenda packet as well for today with the full public engagement report. Uh, most recently, soliciting feedback on the four scenarios as part of our Pick Our Path um, event. We'll review TPC's busy month of June that included review of scenarios, associated trade-offs uh, with each of those direction to develop new scenarios and ultimately the delivery draft plan today. We'll also then talk about next steps, uh, both in the near term as well as over the course of the next, next slide. You'll be familiar with this slide that outlines our performance-based evaluation process, uh, as is uh, required by both state and federal statute. Uh, starting this process now 18 months ago uh, with a regional council's direction to initiate a call for projects. Since then, we've evaluated over 1,500 different projects, program ideas, ultimately delivering these scenarios for your consideration, your direction, and ultimately TPC's delivery of a final investment plan for your consideration today. Next slide. So we are at the end of this process, having delivered this fiscally constrained uh, portfolio of projects and programs for your consideration. Next slide. We'll first start with Pick Your Path Public Engagement Update. Next slide. And just Fast facts about the outreach and engagement process that we facilitated largely in the month of May. <clears throat> You'll see we had and utilized our built out website for, as a virtual platform to solicit feedback. We hosted several events, received several uh, comments, public feedback, both in terms of meetings as well as through our website interactive mapping components as well. We leveraged new tools, uh, including a live chat feature where individuals of the public could engage directly with our planning staff if they had a question or a comment. You'll see a photo here included in this slide, all of our virtual events. We did provide simultaneous Spanish translation as well as, Amer as American Sign Language, um, again, attempting to uh, eliminate barriers to participation during these events. We didn't turn down an uh, event or opportunity. We were, we were requested to present at many civic organizations, spoke with many of your youth councils or transportation commissions along the way, appreciated all those opportunities as well. And then finally on June 4th, uh, hosted and invited our federal partners as well as other stakeholders to provide us updates on their activities, but also provide us feedback as well. Next slide. So high-level overview, you, you have had hopefully the opportunity to review the full 150-page report. Um, like you, um, our public liked uh, a mix of the programs and projects contained within the scenarios, and henceforth, we developed alternatives um, accordingly. Uh, we continue to hear uh, the need um, uh, or the, the desire to continue to expand transportation within the region. The public very much um, approves of the work we have done to date, are willing to spend more to get more and continue the good work in terms of delivering a multimodal transportation package. Specific feedback continues to focus around transit and the need to expand transit choices and options throughout the region. We heard this routinely in our engagement process as well. And specifically amongst youth and in particular underserved populations, that access to transit being of high importance, but also um, top of mind are environmental sustainability issues and matters of equity. So this serves as a high level overview of the composition of public feedback that we have received. Many more details, of course, are included in the uh, report included in your packet. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about the busy month that the Transportation Policy Committee had in the month of June, reviewing various scenarios, providing us direction on revised scenarios, further consideration on those trade-offs. Next slide. You'll recall back in May, um, we delivered four different scenarios, two different concepts, each at two different funding levels to uh, deliver four different scenarios for consideration. We reviewed those with you as well as the public to seek feedback. Next slide. 
In May, Transportation Policy Committee gave us the direction to start with the system optimization half-cent scenario and build from there. The direction specifically from Transportation Policy Committee was to request member agencies submit anything that might be missing that were high priorities of that agency for consideration to include in a revised scenario. TPC giving MAG the direction that that, if that meant going over a half cent or perhaps extending the term of the tax to do so, we were given that authority to be able to build a revised scenario accordingly. Uh, We were great partners um, and appreciated the quick work of your staff uh, turning around your letters of priorities and delivering them to MAG by May 28th. Uh, We took all of that information and then turned around uh, for June 4th two new scenarios. Next slide. One at six-tenths of a cent uh, for 20 years and a second alternative at a half cent, but uh, so not changing cash flow, but extending the term of committed projects for another five years. Those two different scenarios were consumed by the Transportation Policy Committee at its meeting on June 4th. Largely, the conversation coming out of that meeting was support for the half-cent 25-year option. We came back the following week to review assumptions and then final direction from Transportation Policy Committee on remaining project-level choices associated with that. Next slide. And ultimately now have delivered this consensus scenario based and supported by a half-cent funding rate for another 25 years for your consideration today. These were distributed to both Transportation Policy Committee and the Regional Council last week for your consideration. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about the proposed investment plan. Next slide. You'll see uh, we are not changing cash flow necessarily, but we are extending the term uh, for which we are committing projects and programmatic funding to 25 years. All combined, our revenue sources available to the region, combining our federal formula funds with the the half cent sales tax for 25 years, makes available to the region over $20 or $36 billion uh, available for programmatic and project level investments. Next slide. Represented here are the capital-focused projects, discrete projects in the arterial program, freeway program, and high-capacity transit program um, articulated in different colors. You'll see several major selling points as part of this particular scenario. Uh, Full rehabilitation, rebuild of I-17, some of our earliest infrastructure here in this region includes the addition of an HOV lane. You'll see the build-out of SR-24, the important investment of the SR-30, including full build of the two center and eastern segments, as well as an interim facility for the western segment. You'll see included two extensions of light rail coming west into the valley, and then one extension of the streetcar heading into the city of Mesa. There's also included in this scenario three bus rapid transit uh, corridors. We feel like this is a new mode to the region that has high viability in partnering with the city of Phoenix, particularly see this is a viable high-capacity transit alternative for our future. Next slide. Also, um, as is custom, we have calculated regional sub-balance. You'll see them articulated here, assuming using our adopted projections by regional council and then that average growth rate over the term of the tax, you'll see here the proportionality of investments relative to the three subregions depicted. Next slide. So it's important also to remember that while that map has a, a lot of important projects to ensure mobility and connectivity throughout the region, one of the fundamental underpinnings of this program is a more flexible approach, including larger investments in major program areas, as well as new programs to invest in. I'll draw your attention to active transportation. We received a lot of feedback on active transportation, and as a result, uh, we're almost tripling the amount of funding that we are pushing towards active transportation. These are the bicycle and pedestrian investments that many of you in our cities uh, see as valuable. We do as well, and you'll see that investment accordingly. In addition to that, we have uh, set aside funding for emerging technologies, recognizing future innovations will come rapidly, and we want to be able to respond accordingly. In addition to the importance of safety and ITS, those things that are near and dear, particularly in public feedback that we received today. Next slide. So next steps. Next slide. 
uh, again, you'll, I'll reorient you to where we are at in terms of the, the, uh, process here. Uh, we had intended to deliver this draft investment package for your consideration this month, um, and your potential endorsement will allow us to finish the final stages before moving into our air quality conformity process, uh, which will take about four or five months before delivering the final plan for adoption at the end of the year. Uh, that will enable us to head into the legislature next year and, if successful, be able to place uh, this on the ballot for consideration of Maricopa County voters in November of 2022. Next slide. So, as mentioned, uh, Transportation Policy Committee met in special session yesterday morning um, after discussion um, and uh, consideration. Uh, unanimously recommended approval of the planning principles and draft investment plan for which was included in your agenda packet, uh, supported by a half cent sales tax for a term of 25 years, and also added to this uh, the future endeavor uh, for parity amongst all counties in the state of Arizona for the authority up to one cent. Uh, it is on your agenda today for possible action. Um, I will note that our work isn't yet done. Um, even if you do make that endorsement today, we'll be coming back in July uh, with the final piece of project phasing um, and asking for your request to enter into our formal air quality conformity process. With that, Chairman Wires, members of the Regional Council, uh, concludes my presentation. Happy Thank to answer you. any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, very good. Okay, as she said, the item is on the agenda for information, discussion, and uh, possible action. Well, let's not make it possible. Let's make it happen. Draft investment program, princi princi planning principles, and proposed sales tax rate and term. Uh, I would ask uh, Mary Gallego if she'd like to make a motion. I would. Based on the unanimous recommendation of the PPC, I move approval of the Regional Transportation Plan Planning Principles and Draft Investment Plan dated June 18, 2021, supported by a continuation of the dedicated Maricopa County half-cent sales tax for a term of 25 years, while continuing to pursue parity with all other counties in Arizona to enable up to one cent authorization in the future. Second, second? Mayor second. Ortega. Okay, Say I heard one over to So, uh, uh, Mayor Harkey, I got in there just before you did, sir. So I do have a motion. I have a second. Uh, can I have a voice vote in this? I oh, know we don't need a voice vote in, in this room. We do need a voice vote in this room. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed in this room, say nay. Here's the ayes have it. No, no, no. So now we'll go to our people on the tube. Mr. Ortega, how do you vote? Aye, yes. Juan Rodriguez, how do you vote? Aye. Raul Pervera, how do you vote? Uh, aye. Clint Hickman, how do you vote? Aye. Chip Wilson, how do you vote? Aye. Jenny Dickey, how do you vote? Aye. David Smith, how do you vote? Aye. Patrick Duffy, how do you vote? Aye. Christian Price, how do you vote? Uh, Mayor, I'll abstain as I'm in Pinal County, but uh, we're all in this together and we support you 100%. Good catch. Thomas Schoff, how do you vote? Uh, aye. Corey Woods, how do you vote? Aye. Valerie Molina, how do you vote? Aye. Alexis Hermosillo, how do you vote? Aye. Kathy Carlott, how do you vote? Aye. Scott Moore, how do you vote? Aye. Gail Barney, how do you vote? Aye. Congratulations, everyone. A lot of work. Okay, moving on. Item six is the community support for strengthening the regional response to homelessness. Meg, Deputy Executive Director, Amy St. Peter uh, is going to introduce this item. Amy? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the council. We're excited to be here with you today to talk about how we're furthering our work with you, working closely with you to strengthen the regional response to homelessness. In addition to developing this regional action plan, there are other elements in the, in the regional response um, efforts that are also important, such as the heat relief network. With the temperatures rising, this network is even more important, and so we're very excited and very grateful to the Arizona Lottery for their sponsorship of the heat relief network in the amount of $50,000. Thank you very much for your support that was given through the consent agenda today. Based on your action, we will be sharing a community application where, where we will be 
I'm seeking five different communities who will receive $10,000 each to support the heat relief network and being able to share water throughout the entire region. So we're eager to work with you on that. I want to thank you for your support in making that happen. Today, I'm joined by Rob Podliger, um, Chief uh, Community Development and Engagement Officer with Valley of the Sun United Way. I asked Rob to join us today to talk about the close partnership that we have with them in addressing homelessness. Since last fall, we've been working with them and a number of other partners to strengthen the regional response to homelessness, as well as working very closely with all of you. The United Way in particular has great influence with some key stakeholders, such as the business community, nonprofit agencies, and the philanthropic community as well. So as we start to create the action plan, it's imperative that we work together with the United Way and with you and with our other partners. The United Way is committed to aligning their efforts with ours and to bring resources to the table. So communities have great support in implementing these strategies, and we are eager to partner with you as we explore what strategies and tactics would best serve the needs of your residents and what, and what we can do by, by uh, coordinating together and acting together. <clears throat> So at this point now, I'd like to transition to Rob um, so he can talk about the investments that the United Way has made in these regional efforts to address homelessness. Rob? Great. Uh, thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. Can we go ahead and uh, pull up my slides? And one more, please. Thank you. There we go. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, do my presentation, and I'll uh, let you know when to advance the slide. So thank you, Amy, and thanks to all of you for allowing me to join you today and share a bit about Valley of the Sun United Way's commitment to a regional housing solution, our MC 2026 five-year plan, and our alignment with MAG to achieve elements of that plan. The Valley of the Sun United Way has served this community since 1925. In fact, we recently celebrated our 95th year here. Throughout those 95 years, we listened to our community and partnered with the community to address the most pressing needs. I joined uh, Valley of the Sun United Way nine months ago um, after being the CEO of the Seamer Institute for eight years. The Seamer Institute is a foundation focused on homelessness prevention. Um, I had the opportunity of partnering with 50 of the largest United Ways throughout the country, including VSUW. The mission of the Institute was to keep families housed to help improve the educational opportunities for children by allowing them to remain in the school of their origin. As many of you know, addressing homelessness across Maricopa County has been a long priority of Valley of the Sun United Way. Over the past five years, our organization has directly invested more than $22 million to prevent homelessness across the Valley through rental and utility assistance, to provide emergency shelter and to ensure people experiencing chronic homelessness can access support services to the, uh, end their homelessness and remain housed. We have the honor of working with agencies across the Valley, a new leaf in Mesa, for example, in Tempe and Avondale, as well as working with agencies throughout um, the rest of the community, Community Bridges, CAS, UMOM, and the Human Services Campus. It's also important to our board of directors who adamantly supported this work and to our donors, a group who came together to establish an endowment to fund permanent supportive housing that helps support projects with Native American connections in Arizona Housing Inc. And to our corporate partners and employees who donate both funding and volunteer time to get and keep people housed. Supporting direct services that reduce a person's uh, experience with homelessness and preventing homelessness from ever happening is just some of the work that we do. Next slide, please. We also know that it's vitally important to our community because we asked them. Throughout 2020, United Way issued three different surveys, held 18 virtual town halls, and 24 focus groups to determine the most pressing issues in Maricopa County and what the community wanted our role to be in solving those issues. Here you can see on the chart, the results on the left in March of 2020 and those on the right during and after the pandemic hit our community. Housing and homelessness were in the top both pre-COVID and pressing issues at the end of the year also. Those community discussions and insights led United Way to develop our five-year plan for mighty change in Maricopa County, MC 2026. Next slide, please. The plan is built around four focus areas, health, housing and homelessness, education, and workforce development. We heard loud and clear that issues of diversity, 
equity, access, and inclusion run throughout and drive each of these focus areas. And that we cannot truly address these areas without these DEAI driven solutions. We've adopted existing community goals versus creating new goals. And you'll see here on the screen. And we've committed to focusing all of our resources and energy, as well as bringing in current and new partners to address these. As Amy mentioned, since the fall, we've partnered with MAG to strengthen the regional response to homelessness, not only because we believe it's the right approach, but because the community and our donors and 400 plus business partners believe it's the right approach. As a first step to achieve MC 2026 plan, our board of directors and staff just completed an extensive competitive process to determine our year one and multi-year funding to local nonprofits and schools. I'm happy to say today that we have, are investing in FY22 $3.4 million to 39 different agencies specifically to support housing and homelessness solutions across the valley. And we're proud to support MAG and local uh, community governments as a partner along with the Arizona Housing Coalition, ASU Access Nexus, Maricopa County, and Vitalis to achieve these goals set out in the Regional Homeless Strategies Plan. We're proud to be a part of the Regional Collaborative on Homelessness because we see a direct connection between MC26 housing and homelessness strategies that impact Maricopa County and the regional strategies of the plan. The opportunity to align our efforts is not only efficient, but it's more effective for long-term impact. As the action plan is developed, United Way and MAG will work side by side on how we can best partner together and support communities across Maricopa County. Next slide, please. And we'll work to engage our donors, our corporate and nonprofit partners, and our thousands of volunteers into the plan. This includes new MC 2026 partnerships that were created with GPEC, focused on creating a more inclusive economy so every individual and family in our region has the opportunity to succeed. And a partnership with Valley Leadership to engage the emerging leaders of the Valley to apply their expertise and passion to these solutions. Simply, there is no organization, business, or community that could solve homelessness alone. And solutions of the past have not been big enough. And that's why we're thrilled to be part of this vital and critical work within the region. Thank you. Amy? Rob, thank you so much. And Mr. Chairman and members of the council, um, we appreciate the partnership with United Way as, as well as the opportunity to partner with all of you. Particularly want to thank Chair Wires, Mayor Gallego, and Mayor Giles for presenting at the Capstone event that was held earlier this month. A number of you also attended along with your council members and your city and town managers. I want to thank you for your support and your time at that event. So then as we pivot to action, it's critically important to ensure that we're offering a range of different options and solutions that, that communities can use as they participate in these events. We understand that um, every community has different levels of access to funding, to support, and to resources. And it's our goal to be able to support you in meeting the needs of your residents, both housed and unhoused, keeping in mind that different residents and different communities will likely have different needs. So we want to be able to work with you to identify what what will work in your community, um, what, what we can do to support you in, in, in addressing those needs, and what we can do regionally and, what we, and, and how, how working together helps us to, to do more um, than we could do on our own. So over these summer months then, we'll be working very diligently um, to help communities identify which strategies and tactics are relevant to them and to um, ensure that we have the appropriate levels of support um, for you. As, as we're taking a look at what each community is doing, we'll also be conducting a regional assessment to make sure that we're filling any gaps and that we're also identifying opportunities to scale up best practices that might be occurring in one community and be able to offer that regionally. So we look forward to building an action plan with you then that resonates with all communities and that is supported by partners like the United mm -hmm. Way. That concludes our presentation today. I'd like to thank you for your ongoing partnership. It's been incredible to be able to work with you and with your staff and to have your continued feedback throughout this process to ensure that these regional efforts are relevant and responsive to the needs and the priorities that you have in your communities. Mr. Chairman, back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. Uh, and also thank you, Rob. Uh, are there any questions uh, from the membership? Seeing none, uh, this item uh, was for information discussion only. Uh, moving on, item number seven is a legislative update. Uh, Nathan.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Regional Council. I'm going to focus my topic uh, areas today on federal issues. Uh, of course, we continue to track the infrastructure proposal uh, from the administration, understanding that uh, bipartisan conversations are, are ongoing, so we'll continue to track and monitor those conversations. Running concurrently is surface transportation reauthorization. It's been introduced as the Invest in America Act. Uh, just a number of provisions I wanted to uh, share with you today, the first of which is the inclusion of $92 million in projects for Arizona. Uh, you might recall over the spring months of this year, there was the earmark process, the community uh, project funding process uh, that collected those projects through congressional offices. Uh, included in those 92 million projects in Arizona, we're seeing 10 projects in the MAG region totaling over $33 million. Uh, so we'll continue to track those developments. Uh, next slide, please. This is the uh, area that I really want to pause and emphasize on here today. Um, you'll see the graphic uh, on the one side with the maps. This is regarding uh, the federal funding formula methodologies. Uh, these methodologies, we will argue, are old, they're dated. Uh, some of them are tied to 2000 census information, and there's various, various other components of which are outdated as well. Uh, obviously, this hurts fast-growing states and fast-growing regions like Arizona. We've been talking about this issue for a number of years now. When surface transportation reauthorization comes up, it's a difficult conversation to have uh, among national partners because obviously it potentially pits winners versus losers, if you will. Uh, I think we would argue in this scenario, however, we are the loser as a fast-growing state and that these funding formula methodologies need to be updated. Uh, so, uh, thankfully, uh, Congressman Stanton has introduced language in the INVEST Act that's seen here on this one side, Section 1606, uh, which re require the Federal Highway Administration to provide recommendations on how to revise the apportionment methodology, uh, really focusing in on factors with that would yield a more data-driven and equitable apportionment of funding. Uh, so please thank Congressman Stanton for introducing this important provision within the INVEST Act. Additionally, we've been in conversations with Senator Kelly's office uh, as recently as this week. We understand that there could be a provision introduced on the uh, Environmental Public Works Committee uh, from Senator Kelly, which would effectively mirror this provision. We've been in conversation as well with other uh, metropolitan planning organizations in the Intermountain West. As you can see in that graphic there, the red states are the faster growing states. Uh, so we'll continue to uh, encourage them to reach out to their congressional offices as well. Uh, in your travels, if you will, with our congressional offices, if you could let them know that this is important to our state and region, we would appreciate that. Uh, we've also had outreach to Texas as well. So really trying to build a coalition of support around this issue. We appreciate any help that you can uh, offer uh, on this um, uh, important provision. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Questions from the council? Seeing none, got off easy, didn't you? Thanks, Nathan. <clears throat> no action uh, on this item today. Moving on to item number eight, uh, the election of officers of the Transportation Policy Committee. Eric, you're up. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have my script in front of me, but um, every year, uh, according to our uh, transportation, our uh, MAG bylaws, uh, the Regional Council uh, votes on uh, a new chair of the Transportation Policy Committee uh, and a vice chair. So uh, that's what's on the table today. So we're looking for a motion for a uh, possible uh, chair of TPC and vice chair. Before we get to the motion, do we have any questions from the membership on this? Okay. Uh, item is on the agenda for election of the Officers Transportation Committee. Can I get that motion now? Okay. I have a motion from uh, Georgia Lord, second from okay, Gallego. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, voice vote in this room. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Here's eyes have. No, no, no. Go back to the screen again. David Ortega, how do you vote, sir? Aye. Aye. Uh, Ron Rodriguez, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Raul Pervera, how do you vote? Mr. Chairman, my first name is pronounced Rui, and I vote yes. 
Perfect. Clint Hickman, how do you vote? Aye with a bullet. Chip Wilson, how do you vote? Aye. Jenny Dickey, how do you vote? Aye. David Smith, how do you vote? Aye. Patrick Duffy, how do you vote? Aye. Christian Price, how do you vote? Aye. Thomas Schoff, how do you vote? Aye. Corey Woods, how do you vote? Aye. Valerie Molina, how do you vote? Aye. Alexis Hermosillo, how do you vote? Aye. Kathy Carlott, how do you vote? Aye. Scott Moore, how do you vote? Aye. Gail Barney, how do you vote? Aye. Okay. Here's we have a unanimous vote. With that, uh, it does pass. Uh, number nine. Item number nine is the election of regional council officers, executive committee members. On May 26, 2021, the Meg Nominating Committee met and recommended a slate of officers for 2021-22. The Meg officer positions are chair, vice chair, and treasurer in accordance with the Meg nomination process. Three at-large members also were nominated to serve on the executive committee, and the past chair of the regional council serves on the executive committee. The slate includes, as chair, Mayor Giles, City of Mesa, uh, Vice Chair Mayor Ken Weiss, City of Avondale, Treasurer Mayor Ken Weiss, Avondale, there we go, Treasurer Mayor Kate Gallego, City of Phoenix, and three at-large members, including Mayor Kevin Harkey, City of Chandler, Mayor Les Peterson, Town of Carefree, and Mayor Alexis Hermosillo, City of El Mirage, as well as myself as past chair. Any questions from the membership? Seeing none. This item is on the agenda for election of the Regional Council Officers Chair, Vice Chair, and Treasurer, and the three at large. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we accept the uh, nominee's uh, uh, slate for the three positions and the three at large positions. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Mayor Weiss, a second from Mayor Peterson. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, voice vote in this room. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. And we'll go back to uh, screen. David Ortega, how do you vote? Aye. Yes. Thank you. Ron Rodriguez, how do you vote? I vote aye. Raul Rivera, how do you vote? Try you one more time. Ralph Rivera, how do you vote? Got him when he stepped out. Clint Hickman, how do you vote? Aye. Chip Wilson, how do you vote? Aye. Jenny Dickey, how do you vote? Aye. David Smith, how do you vote? Aye. Patrick Duffy, how do you vote? Aye. Christian Price, how do you vote? Aye. Tom Schoff, how do you vote? Aye. Corey Woods, how do you vote? Aye. Valerie Merlina, how do you vote? Aye. Alexis Hermosillo, how do you vote? Aye. Kathy Carlott, how do you vote? Aye. Scott Moore, how do you vote? Aye. Gail Barney, how do you vote? Aye. Okay, did I miss anyone? Try uh, Rolf Rivera one more time. How do you vote? Aye. Rui. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So uh, we're unanimous. Correct? All right. Um, figure out where I'm at now. Okay. Well, I guess uh, number 10 is uh, passing of the gavel. So, got slides up there for that? Okay. A year ago when I was elected as chair, we were locked down due to this little thing called COVID. Now, in fact, this final meeting is the first one I've been able to preside over in person. While today's meeting allows us to begin reestablishing those face-to-face -face connections we so desperately missed, it's also further evidence that we're headed in the right direction. You know, coming out of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, I'm proud that despite uh, all that was going on, each of us remained dedicated and also engaged with Meg in her efforts to improve the region, regardless of what happened in the world around us. We know Meg's work directly impacts our region's residents every day by bringing a greater quality of life to everyone 
who calls this region home. Switch to two, there you go. Uh, the region benefits from the work done in, in Meg's five focus areas. The first being safe and smart travel. This year's priority is the new regional transportation plan. It's called Momentum. The plan provides the framework to ask voters for an extension to a sales tax that supports Maricopa County transportation. Now that's not easy. As I said before, and I'll say again, we have more needs than resources. With guidance from the management committee, TPC and MAG staff, we spent countless hours analyzing and evaluating investments that produces a greater benefit to the majority of the region. After this morning's vote to approve the preferred scenario associated sales tax rate in term, we've proven to ourselves our ability to work together to achieve the greater purpose of planning transportation, investments and services for future prosperity. I want to thank each of you as well as our transportation committee members who are not all on this council for working tirelessly to get where we are today. Change to three. Now, our progress also continues in Meg's four other core areas, which include uh, economy and growth, quality of life, environment and sustainability, and safe and efficient operations. Our unified purpose of deciding and securing the collaborative resources we need to address the increasing number of homelessness in our region is proof of our dedication, both singularly and regionally. I'm incredibly uh, proud of our work and adoption of the 14 regional strategies to address homelessness. I know that this uh, topic is a high priority of Mayor Giles, and over the next year, I'm sure that he'll lead a development of action plan to put all those strategies to work. Uh, number four, as, as, as we strengthen relationships. Uh, okay. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so, so everybody needs to mute their mics, if you would, please. Okay. As we strengthen relationships within Arizona's Sun Corridor, which closely links the economies of five co uh, counties. We maintain partnerships with our international trading partners in key industry sectors. We reached out across the border to our partners in Mexico through the Arizona uh, Mega Region Partnership, and all of these continued efforts reinforce a stronger regional economy. We remain committed to protecting public health through our planning efforts and air quality and other environmental responsibilities, such as water quality management plan process. We recognize the collection, management, and analyzation of data are vital parts of our regional planning decisions. We embrace thoughtful collaboration and inventive, innovative approaches which are necessary to ensuring that we meet the needs of our residents and of our communities. And finally, slide six, we are strong and we're going to continue to get stronger. I thank each of my fellow regional council members for your support over the past year, and I will continue to support this body, this region, and the people who live here. And before I pass the gavel, I just want to state, I hope that I never have to hear the word that we heard so much in the past. You know what that is? Cooperation. No, no, I want to, I want to hear that all the time. <laughs> Scenario. <laughs> okay. With that, uh, I'm going to formally uh, pass the gavel to uh, Mesa's mayor. Sir, I wish you the very, very best of luck. It's all yours. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Wires. I, uh, on behalf of all of us, we just really want to express our, our deep appreciation to you for a job very well done. What a challenging time to serve as the chairman of MAG, and you, you did a great job, uh, have, have delivered some, some great outcomes. And as a small token of our appreciation, uh, we do have a, an, an award to give to you that I hope you'll, you'll put proudly in, in, your, in your office. For those who are online, I'll just read it. It says, Mary, uh, Mayor Jer Jerry P. Wires, in appreciation for your dedicated service as chair of Maricopa Association of Governments Regional Council 2020 to 2021. So, Jerry, thanks again for your great service. And, uh, we know you're not going anywhere, but, but thanks for all that you've done to, to lead this great organization for the last year. Thank you. like the voice of experience. Uh, um, well, um, 
Jerry, you, you've accomplished a lot, but I have to say that uh, in the regional transportation plan certainly ranks high. But I do, I will note that uh, we now have Diet Coke at the MAG meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Those of you who are online, I'm sure that will dramatically increase in-person attendance at our next meeting. So uh, I, I won't try to take credit for this, Jerry. Thank you for, for what you've done. Uh, I do have a few thoughts to share with you. Our, our region, as we know, is not only strong, it's resilient. Mayor Wires touched on the many significant efforts already underway at MAG, and I look forward to leading these efforts during the upcoming year. I have three key priorities. The first is moving forward with a long-range regional transportation plan, as we all know, known as Momentum. That's the new word, Jerry, that hopefully we don't get too sick of, uh, as, as approved today. That was a huge accomplishment. The funding received through Prop 400, as we know, makes up significant revenue sources that allows MAG to carry out its important mission of improving our transportation system. It keeps us moving safely and plays an important role in our economic development. Maricopa County was one of the first regions in the United States to have a dedicated sales tax for transportation. It's allowed us to build many transportation projects that we use every day today. We continue to be one of the fastest growing counties in the nation. It's critical that we continue to maintain, improve, and expand our transportation infrastructure to meet the needs of our growing region. I'm proud of the work that's been done to date and, and the vote that we took today to move forward with the regional transportation plan to submit to voters. Having watched the Suns game last night, like I'm sure many of you did, I can't help but see a, 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 an analogy. Uh, MAG staff, Audra, Eric, uh, you're Jay Crowder, and you've made a great pass. Um, Mayor Gallego on the Transportation Policy Committee, you're Devin Booker, set a great screen for us. Uh, and But now the ball is sitting above the rim. Uh, it's up to us uh, as to continue to work as a team with our legislature, with our governor, uh, and with those who are going to support this campaign to dunk the ball into the rim. Uh, that's going to happen. Uh, as I said yesterday in our TPC meeting, success is mandatory in this situation. So, so that effort will, of course, uh, be uh, our, this organization's focus throughout the next year. But we need to work on other priorities at the same time. Uh, one of our strengths as a regional council is the fact that we can make progress on more than one high, high priority item at a time. A second important priority is the regional work to address homelessness. We developed the regional homelessness strategies through extensive outreach and research, engaging more than 1,600 people and countless hours of analysis. We're now entering a critical phase of this work as we develop the specific actions to implement the 14 strategies. During a recent MAG forum, I was especially moved by the story of Trevor Southwick, a Valley man who was living the American dream. He had his own place, was attending college on a scholarship, and had a great job working at a bank. Childhood traumas led Trevor to look for solace through narcotics. His life spiraled into homelessness. It took persistence, but Trevor ultimately found help through a peer support specialist, a behavioral health professional with, lot, with lived experience. Today, Trevor is, in, is himself a peer support specialist. Trevor didn't get up, give up, and neither can we. We can and will make a significant impact by working together. A third critical priority is ensuring the issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion are top of mind in everything MAG does. MAG has adopted policy principles that highlight our commitment to prohibiting discrimination in the planning and delivery of our programs and initiatives. MAG is a forum for governments, stakeholders, and the public that serves our communities and works to improve quality for all residents. MAG recently issued a public statement condemning the ongoing tragedies that are, that are the result of racially and ethnically fueled violence. We must be vigilantly aware of these issues as we make regional policy decisions. In closing, I'm proud of MAG for continuing to be the consummate forum of collaboration, bringing leaders from around the region to a single table. As elected officials, there is peace of mind knowing we are not alone when it comes to facing challenges. We rely on, on each other for counsel, for collective problem solving, and for creating a competitive, thriving region. Thank you for your trust and continued partnership. I look forward to the year ahead. Now let's move to agenda item 11, which is a request for future agenda items. Mr. Okay. Chair? Yes, please. So the only thing I would ask, I'm gonna, I'm gonna combine comments from 11 and 12. Um, with the NASCAR championship race coming up in November, uh, last year there was a huge uh, cooperation from all cities. And 
I'm kind of asking for that again as as we get ready to promote the race in Avondale and in the West Valley. I'm asking all cities present and on the call um, to, if possible, reach out to my team, reach out to me personally, see how we can help with that. And part of that request for future agendas is to have um, the president of Phoenix Raceway, Julie Giese, just do a three or five minute update on the race and how it impacts all the cities in the region. And that can be done sometime in um, August or uh, August or September. So I would request that. Okay, thank you very much. Other requests for future agenda items? Hearing none, how about the uh, next item is comments from committee. Any comments you'd like to share with us? All right, hearing Mayor, none, that concludes. Mayor, this is Kathy yes. Carla. Yes, yes. Uh, Mayor Carla, please proceed. Thank you. I did just want to thank um, Mayor Wires for his service, and I want to welcome you to the position of chair of MAG. We are happy to have you. Thanks to both of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mayor Carla. And if you don't mind, I'm going to take a, a personal uh, privilege in thanking you for your leadership of the league. Uh, we've, we've, everyone in this room knows the critical role that, that you and, and your uh, officers have played in helping us uh, make progress on the budget recently. So thank you for your great leadership. Thank you. I appreciate that. You bet. Council, any other comments? Hearing none, that concludes the items on our agenda for this meeting. We are adjourned. Sure.